Hello, we will be talking about mammogenesis, lactogenesis, galactopoiesis, and the mammary involution, which is part of the course Veterinary Endocrinology and Reproduction. Starting with an introduction. Milk is an essential fluid needed by, by the neonate and is also used for human consumption. Understanding the process of how milk is produced will enable its optimum production not just for the neonates but also for the dairy industry. First, we need to talk about mammogenesis. Mammogenesis is defined as a process of the growth and development of the mammary gland. In the developing conceptus, mammary gland develops along the lateral lines on the ventral surface called mammary ridges. Mammary ridges are the slightly thickened epidermis extending from the axillary region up to the inguinal region, a kind of the species that determines the number of the mammary glands that arise from the mammary ridges. In mammals such as dog, pig, and cat, the mammary gland develops in the inguinal region while in the human and the elephant and also in the monkeys, the paired mammary gland develops in the thoracic region. The primary bud develops from the thickened epithelium of the epidermis, which form the mammary ridges. The primary bud pushes down to the dermis beneath as it develops. As the development continues, bud protrusions form away from the primary bud, which, is result, which results in the secondary mammary buds which later lengthens and branches out throughout the embryonic development. Lastly, the branch buds form small ducts in the center of each bud in a process called canalization, where afterwards, each bud turns into a duct with a lumen. During parturition, the mammary gland contains the lactifer lactiferous ducts, opening to a larger duct and then empties into the outer mammary gland. Isometric growth occurs between birth and a puberty, which means the development of the mammary gland is at the same rate as other tissues. After puberty, the mammary gland undergoes allometric growth where it develops faster than the normal growth of the body. During the early estrocycle, branching of the ducts occur as well as it increases diameter due to the hormone estrogen. After several estrocycles, the duct and the alveolar framework forms in the mammary gland, which lays the framework for milk synthesis. Prolactin and somatotropin enables the full and rapid growth of the duct system, which surges in the onset of puberty. Second, we need to talk about lactogenesis. Lactogenesis is the process of initiating lactation, where the alveolar cells develop and differentiate into milk producing cells and tissues. The first stage occurs during pregnancy where the gland in the other differentiates into sec uh, to secrete small amounts of milk components such as the lactose and the casein. After being adequately differentiated to secrete enough milk product, the secretions controlled and held in check by the circulating progesterone in the blood. The second stage is known as the abundant secretion of milk which is influenced by the parturition. In some species, this stage before in some species this stage starts before parturition where there is a drop of progesterone levels in the blood. Colostrum and transitional milk described in the mammary secretion during the early days postpartum containing relatively large amounts of sodium, chloride, immunoglobulins, and lactoferrin, which are important in a newborn. Lastly, we need to talk about the galactopoiesis. So galactopoiesis is the process of maintaining lactation after it has been established. The components involved in this process are the galactopoietic hormones and removal of the milk accumulation. Prolactin is secreted during milk let out in ruminants and non-ruminants, which also regulates 
the secretion of milk. The frequent suckling of the young further enhances the secretion of milk. Involution Involution is the return of the mammary gland to its non-secretory state, both anatomically and physiologically. As a dependence of the uh, as a dependence in milk for soul nutrition decreases in the neonate, less suckling of the newborn occurs. Due to this, there is a buildup of pressure within the mammary gland, making the secretory cells less functional, thus pressure atrophy occurs. The milk synthesis in the alveolar epithelium declines up to the point of complete cellular atrophy, making it non-functional. Immune cells like lymphocyte and macrophages digest the tissue of the mammary gland. With following gestation, the prolactin, adenocotropic hormones, and the placental hormones will stimulate the alveolar cells again for another gestation, or what we call lactation. So that, that summarizes the topics for the mammogenesis, lactogenesis, and galactopoiesis. Thank you for listening.